Hey everyone, welcome back to a new vlog. So I thought for this vlog I would do like my wrap up of February but then in the form of a vlog because I realized that just regular sit down wrap ups don't really do too well and I don't know if it's the format or the video like the wrap up itself. So I thought I would just mix it up and make my wrap up into like a daily vlog. So I'll just vlog throughout the day and tell you the books that I read in February. So I hope you're going to like this type of wrap up more. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments um, if you do like this type of wrap up more. And otherwise I'll just see what I'll do for my next wrap up. But for now, I thought I would do a little vlog. So it is Thursday morning right now. I'm going to go for a walk with Michelle from Books Michelle in a bit. But first I'm just going to be doing some work. But the first book that I read in February was actually an audiobook. It was Grown, written by Tiffany D. Jackson. I actually read this for like a Patreon vlog because my patrons voted for that audiobook to be my next audiobook. So I made a vlog all about it on my Patreon, but I will just quickly um, give you some of my brief thoughts on the book. So this is a young adult contemporary book that's all about a girl named Enchanted. She's a really great singer, but she never really had this breakthrough yet. But then at this audition, she meets Corey Fields and Corey Fields is like this really big R&B singer. And, you know, they start hanging out and he is kind of her way in into like stardom and fame but Corey is a very manipulative and creepy guy he's like misusing his power over enchanted and it's a really sad relationship and quite a tough one to read as well um so definitely a trigger warning for that it's basically all about you know their relationship and his manipulation and his as i said misuse of power but then the big thing happens is that this is all like on the back of the book Corey fields is suddenly dead and Enchanted wakes up the day after with blood on her hands, not knowing what happened. So that is another big part of the story. I thought this was a really great one. I gave it four out of five stars. There are definitely a lot of trigger warnings, so please read those first. I think the writer did such a brilliant job at you know highlighting all of the disrespect and injustice that black women face and really making the reader aware of that. So I definitely learned a lot. It was a very tough and emotional read. The audiobook, the entire production was great. I listened to it in like a few days, I think. It was definitely a really quick but powerful read. I definitely plan on reading more of Tiffany D. Jackson's books after reading this one, so I'm really happy um, that I read this one. So this was the first book I read in February and now I'm just going to be doing a little bit of work and then I will come back to you with the second book. And also I'm sorry that I keep like moving my head. I washed my hair yesterday and my fringe never works after that, as you can tell. Also, I'm going to grow it out a little bit. So this is this annoying middle stage of can't really wear it as a regular fringe because it's too long but the curtain fringe is also not really working yet because it's too short for that. So I'm really sorry for the annoying like this. Okay, time to do some work. Okay, I just finished doing all of the addresses for the orders that I'm going to be packing today, but now it is time for book two that I read in February. So the next book is Wintering, written by Catherine May. I actually got this one as a gift from a very um, lovely subscriber of mine, Claire, and she said she really enjoyed this one. This is a non-fiction book, and it says the power of rest and retreat in difficult times. This is all about how in winter we always have, you know, it's a lot darker, people are generally a little bit more sad in winter. It's just, you know, the darkness and the cold and everything. And Catherine May in this book sort of goes on this journey to talking to different people from different countries, how they survived the winter, how different it is in different countries, but also for animals and just a lot of different things that have to do with wintering and, you know, how we can get through times that are a bit more difficult, not only the winter, but also just, you know, for personal reasons. And I thought this one was a really interesting one. And I have to be honest, it sometimes felt a little bit like all over the place, but it definitely made me feel very calm and also um, kind of intrigued by the sort of practices that people from different countries do during the winter and how different it can be in different countries. She talked um, a lot about people from Scandinavian countries where it can get really, really cold in winter and how these people really try to embrace the winter and the cold and the darkness that it brings with it. So it was definitely an inspiring read, especially because she also talked a lot about her personal experiences with difficult times and how she got through it. So it really made me think about, you know, how we're all sometimes just dealing 
dealing with difficult things not only during winter but just you know throughout the entire year i decided to give it three out of five stars mainly because as i said it just sometimes felt a little bit um all over the place but overall it definitely was a very inspiring read because it's one of those books where you can definitely go back to um if you are experiencing a more you know darker time in your life i'm so grateful that claire sent it to me so thank you so much claire you know what i also always do if someone sends me a book via my amazon wishlist and if there is a little note with it i always stick it in the you know in the book <laughs> the first page so whenever i open a book that someone gives it to me i always see the note and it just warms my heart it's always in german though because i used to see the german amazon so it's like ein gruß von claire <laughs> so this was the second book i read in february when I take a walk <laughs> oh well um I'm going to try not to touch it I went on a lovely walk with Michelle we had some tea and I thought I would tell you about the next book that I read I did not expect to love this book at all it is Hold Back the Tide by Belinda Salisbury I got this one in um, a book box I think like a year and a half ago maybe two years ago and I never really thought about picking it up but I wanted to read something short and this one was short and a standalone so I thought I'm just going to pick it up. It looks quite creepy from the cover, as you can see, and definitely was. So this is about a girl named Alma, and she lives in this town called Olmskula. I believe this is like Scottish inspired, um, because it's also all about this lock, um, you know, like a, a, a lake. And a long time ago, something happened to Alva's mother, and because of what's happened, she really wants to leave town. But suddenly there are like dark things happening in Omskula, and Alma actually has to, you know, stay and kind of fight those dark forces and the dark things that are happening. Bit of a vague description, but I don't want to give away too much, because otherwise I will spoil things, and it's a very short book. So this is all you're going to have to go with. I love this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I just didn't expect it, but this had everything that I want in a book. It has characters that I'm actually caring for, it has a cool plot line, it is like thrilling. Each chapter, like the end of the chapter, makes me want to continue with the, the story and read the next chapter immediately. It has quite short chapters, it has plot twists. It was just a brilliant book! I really enjoyed it! It is only 300 pages, but so much happened in those 300 pages, I was hooked. I wanted to know what was going to happen and if a book can do that that is exactly what i want in a book so i am so happy i finally read it and that i enjoyed it so much also it is quite you know as i said scary it's a bit dark and normally i'm not really into those type of books it was definitely a little bit actually scary i saw the things that were happening just like visualize it in my head and it was quite creepy and i thought should i be reading this at night you're so great so if you're looking for a cool fancy story with cool characters, an awesome plot, just like a lot of things were happening. Highly recommend this one. I love it when you read a book that you just, you know, are not necessarily very interested in or don't really expect too much from it and then this happens. So this one was a very great success. Highly recommend it. Five out of five stars. So happy I read it. Um, yeah, read this book. I'm going to be making some lunch in a bit. I don't really know what I'm going to make. Probably just some bread, although it's a bit boring. I don't know, we'll see. And then after that, I'm just going to pack some orders. So I will show you that as well. ever but instant noodles is just so good i always do add some like extra spices to make it a little bit more just spicy and tasteful but it's good and now i'm just watching some of the offers because i'm re-watching it i'm just watching it the entire day whilst just working because 
it's such an easy show to just listen to as well. But I thought I would first show you the next book that I read in February, and that is a poetry book. I haven't read a poetry book in so long, but Mika from Mika August recommended this to me, and it just sounded really good, so I thought I would buy it. It is called I Hope This Reaches Her in Time by R.H. Sin. All of the poems are really, really short. They're not even a page long. Most of them are like half a page, not even. Before I bought this, I didn't notice this was very much focused on women post breakup and about how you can get through that and how awesome you are and how beautiful you are and how um, it's such a loss for the person they broke up with. So not really my situation at the moment, <coughs> single forever, but um, apart from that, there were definitely some poems in that that were not necessarily about that and also just about how we're all beautiful beings, how we can bloom even in the darkness and you know i tapped a few let me just read you one you began as roots but you blossom into more you are not your past be here be present be more like that one let's see another one it's almost as if her soul is a pack of wolves she's brave she's strong she's unstoppable all of these type of poems are very short and some of them are very much focused on you know the post breakup for example um Eventually the girl you took for granted will take her love and give it to herself and someday someone better than you will love her in all the ways you couldn't. Still a very inspiring poem even though I'm not going through a breakup. <laughs> But as you can see, it is incredibly short. I just read it in one go and I tabbed a few of the poems that I thought were really beautiful and that I really just reread a few times, you know what I mean? You can definitely read this. If you're not going through a breakup, I'm not going through a breakup and I still really enjoyed it because some of them was just very inspiring and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. So it was definitely um, a very beautiful one and I love the cover. It's so simple but oh, love it. So this was the next book I read in February. Um, I have two more books to talk about but first of all I'm going to be packing some orders because I really need to because I'm going to be shipping them again tomorrow. And of course I'll be watching the offers whilst doing this. Okay, finished packing a lot of the orders, so I thought it's time to talk about the last two books that I read. Yes, two, because one of them I'm not going to discuss too much because I read this one for my book club for Patreon, so I kind of want to keep it a little bit exclusive, but it's The Baron and Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This was a very beautiful, whimsical, fancy story with brilliant characters. The middle part was just a little bit slow, and that is why I gave it four out of five stars, but the writing style was gorgeous, and I enjoyed this one very very much. I will definitely continue with the rest of the series, especially because of the ending. So even though the middle part was too slow in my opinion, I still thought it was so good. So I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. By the way, if you want to see my full um, like reading vlog for this book, I have a Patreon book club in which we read a book every two months and we talk about it on our Discord channel and I will make a reading vlog all about it on my Patreon page. That's why I'm talking about this one a little bit more quickly. And then the last book I read in February was this really short one. It is called Waarom je niet zo maar moet stemmen? Waar je ouders op stemmen? And this is obviously not English. This is Dutch. It is written by Tietje Hogedorn and Nienke Schuitemaker. And this is all about Dutch politics. Dutch politics, you may wonder. Yes, because next month, oh no, this month, oh my goodness, it's like in two weeks, we can finally vote again for like the big national election. So I'm really excited for that because I hope there is going to be like a different prime minister for once, although I doubt it, but we will see. I do know a little bit about politics. I'm not the best when it comes to politics, but I do know like the general ID. We have a lot of different parties in the Netherlands. In each party you can vote for like a dozen people or more. So it is very different than for example in the US. It's just a little bit complicated what goes on behind the scenes, how they create laws, you know, all of these things. And I didn't really know too much about it, but then Tisha Hoogloon decided to write this little book, which is basically translated, I haven't taught you the translation, why you shouldn't just vote for the party that your parents vote for, and why you should, you know, think for yourself, and why it's important to vote, especially as a young person, because if you're from the Netherlands, and if you can vote, if you're old enough to vote, please go and vote, because there are so few young people who vote compared to all the people, and we can make such a difference, so please go and vote. I can't stress this enough. It's so important that we use our voice and now we actually have, you know, 
we can use a voice with such a small thing. So if you want to know more about Dutch politics and why you should vote, I highly recommend this book. This was really interesting. This was all about, you know, the Eerste and Tweede Kamer, <laughs> the Kabinet, the Parlement, the Regering, how everything, um, you know, how it all connects, how they create laws, all the little ins and outs of what happens, you know, behind the scenes. And it was incredibly interesting. I read it in one sitting and that hardly ever happens with books. It's like a hundred and something pages, a hundred and um, twenty. And I read it in one sitting, so I was definitely very into it. It was also incredibly funny, so it was a great one. I don't really know how to rate this. I think I gave it like four out of five stars, but don't know why I wouldn't just give it five out of five stars. It had everything I wanted in this little book. A lot of information. They really try to convince you why you should vote and why you should vote for the party that you connect to most and the person that you connect to most. There are so many different like quizzes that you can do online to see which party fits with your values and what you want most and what you think is most important. So to everyone who can vote, but especially for my Dutchies who are above 18 and can vote on the 17th of March, please 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 go and vote and just take a few quizzes go and look into the different parties <laughs> this is a lot about a dutch book i'm sorry if you're not dutch but i thought this one was just really great and i'm so so happy i read it so highly recommend this one if you are dutch also love the cover gave me a little bit like hank green vibes so this was the last book that i read in february and I really like doing this type of wrap up. Let me know in the comments if you like this too. And if you do, I am definitely going to be doing this for my next ones as well. Because I personally don't really like filming wrap ups. But if I can just, you know, every hour or so talk about a different book, it feels like a lot less pressure to film my wrap up. And it's great. And I love vlogging just a lot more than sit down videos. So I really hope you liked this. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. And of course, you can follow me on my social media and on my Patreon as well. I always leave everything down below in the description. And last but not least, I really hope you're having a very beautiful day and I'll see you in my next video.